over the course of that summer, at some point, I stopped kind of controlling the diet and the diet started controlling me. And I'm not exactly sure at what point that was, but it, it felt really scary because I had turned into someone that I had never known before and I didn't. Last week he was healthy, last month he was healthy. Mm -hmm. And because he was so young and he was only 45 years old and he was this young man, they treated him super aggressively, but the cancer still was just, it had spread to too many places. And 13 weeks later, he passed away the first day of my freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. So oh, it's so true. And when I look at my sisters who are my best friends, but we are all so different and now having two daughters myself, it goes to show you, you know, the whole nature versus nurture. And like, it's amazing to me that we really were basically raised the exact same, same parents, same nurturing environment, but there is certainly something to birth order and for sure, because we are very different. Yeah. I'm so proud that my daughters have the role models that we have now and the people that are so body positive I mean, there just cannot be enough of that. Um, growing up, being the youngest, my two older sisters who are just beautiful girls, and they always were, um, but they were, they were and they still are stick thin. And they are just, they come by it, that's their body type. And, and I jokingly like to say that I came out of the womb with curves because I just, <laughs> I never had that body type. I, I, I really am grateful, even though that was such a painful time in my life, because firsthand I got to see how being so thin, which I had always thought would be the answer to everything, it just, it didn't make me happy. It didn't bring me joy. And so that has been something that's really changed the trajectory of how I look at my body and try how I help other people with their body. Because for me now, it's just all about how my favorite things about my dad is that he was a very generous man and he would give you anything except his food. And whenever mm -hmm. we would go out to a restaurant, you know, my mom would frequently be the one that's like, do you like mine better? Oh, you can have it. We can switch. My dad would always say, Cheryl, everybody should order what they want and get whatever you want, but just don't get mine. So I think it was just when we were watching a show that highlighted eating disorders. And it had all of these different girls um, and some boys of different, different ages and different ranges and, and different sizes. Because I think the misconception is to have an eating disorder, you have to be stick thin. And mm. that's, that's not the case at all. And wow. sadly, he passed away as well. And um, those, those two experiences has totally shaped who I am as far as the health um, component to me. And when I was younger, of course, I had, I had huge amounts of health anxiety because you, know, you have two people close to you that you love in your life mm -hmm. die at such young ages. I don't sell it, I share it, because I think there's a lot of really healthy, focused people that still have no idea how important the skin is and what we put it on our body. And, and I just think there's still, there's still room for us to grow and learn from that because I think that's a newer concept. And, and you guys definitely do a better job, but here in the United States, our lack of regulation as far as what chemicals can go into our skincare products is really, really sad. Yeah. As a, a friend of mine in our community and who was on the soccer field, a super beautiful, young, smart girl, um, who was just on the soccer field after school having practice. And a 39-year-old woman had a seizure at the wheel. And she went across a large, vast field through trees. And it was ridiculous. And, and the whole team went running. And she was run over. And she died. And that was... That was actually the first um, tragedy of my younger life. So it doesn't, I don't mm. fault these poor teens that at the end of a night, when they're feeling so lonely and down and they, they pull up their Snapchat or their whatever, and they mm. see everybody, it looks like rainbows and unicorns and it's okay. the highlight reel of everybody around them getting together and doing this and this. And they think, my gosh, I've been in my bed since eight o'clock in pajama pants. 
my life never looks like that, you know? And I think it can be so lonely and isolating for them because I think it reinforces this message that we know are not truths, right? Upsetting. But what my point is, is I really think that, I think his name is Bob McCartney, and he says, human's greatest fear now is of being invisible, is of not being seen, is of not feeling of any worth. And I think that's the crisis that we're in right now, especially with our teens, that they feel just not worthy and not valued. Right. And and within the first five minutes, which I truly believe sets the tone for all married couples, right? I believe the first five minutes of like the getting home part sets the tone for the whole night. And he would get home and he would carry his stress and I would have my stress. And it's like we were both jockeying for position to be validated for like who had the harder day. And we Waking at dawn, packing the 